The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, 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 TFNN opens the door to the future. Larry Pesavento, systems analyst, is your tour guide into the market futures. Want to see into the future? Well, climb aboard Larry's time machine and come with us. Larry takes your phone calls now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. This is the Futures Hour. Here's your host, Larry Pesavento. Okay. Oh, dear. Uh, good afternoon, folks. Uh, sorry for that. Had to get my headset hooked up right. Uh, the first ch um, chart that I put into uh, Tiger TV today was the uh, long-term weekly chart in Treasury bonds. Uh, and as you can see, the high that we made yesterday... Uh, was a 786 retracement uh, of that level to the exact tick. I mean, it was flat out, spot on at uh, 148. So it was, uh, you know, really uh, unbelievable uh, how it hit that exact number. We'll cover notes here also because I really believe, you know, we got to follow the money when we're looking at these markets. And the bonds and notes are far, far bigger markets than the stock markets. I think the notes are six times bigger than the bonds, and the bonds are ten times bigger than the stocks. So you can imagine how, how big these markets, uh, you know, really are. So they're, they're just absolutely huge. But that really, doesn't, that really doesn't tell the story that I'd like to talk to today is because, you know, I believe in these numbers of the Fibonacci summation sequence and sacred geometry and stuff, but... Uh, I don't think you could ever find a better example than what we have going on in our interest rate markets at this time. And remember, it's very it's impossible for someone to manipulate these markets other than for a very short period of time. They're just too large. And uh, what I'd like to share with you now, I know I, I just heard uh, uh, David on the show here where he talked about the uh, you know volatility in Treasury bonds. I'd like to really show you that volatility because... It is absolutely an incredible portrait of uh, Fibonacci in action. And uh, it's a five-minute chart on Treasury bonds uh, starting yesterday when we were trading at the 142 level. Uh, the market shot up $6,000 in a matter of uh, uh, f five hours. It went to uh, the 148 level. Uh, then it dropped $4,000 to the 61% retracement down at the 144 it then rallied $1,500 and then dropped down to the 786, another $3,000, making it a $13,000 swing in T-bonds in one day. Boys and girls, people that are in bonds do not like that kind of action. That's like pork bellies or, uh, you know, uh, yeah, pork bellies would be a good one. They don't trade them anymore, but that's how they, that's how they used to trade. Probably the one most uh, close to that now would be, um, you know, natural gas or, or crude oil would be my guess. But even, though, even those hit Fibonacci numbers really well. And then what happened today is the market had a perfect 61% retracement to the 146.02 uh, level, which was another $3,000 up. And so far, we went $3,000 up and $3,000 down today. So in the last uh, 20 hours of trading uh, Treasury bonds, they've moved over $20,000 in swings uh, during these last couple of days. That's not how the bond market trades, boys and girls. It really isn't. Uh, there's something big out there. I don't know what it is. All I know is if we ever get above that 148 level, I'll probably be taking a boat ride with Mr. O'Brien somewhere uh, in the South Pacific would be my guess because bonds could easily go, you know, above that 154 level, which was, uh, you know, supposedly the top of all tops. But whether this happens or not, it's going to be very difficult for them to take out that high at that 148 level, in my opinion, because it was such a perfect you know, Fibonacci level that it was just really, you know, absolutely, you know, spot on. Now, that's that's the Treasury bond market. So the next one we want to take a look at would be the Treasury notes. These are the ten, ten, 2 to 10 years. These are the, the smaller paper and uh, or the shorter term paper. And all I wanted to do was to uh, come in and give you an idea of what's happening with that one also, because here again, we had the same situation occurring, only a little bit 
different ratio this time because this market is a little this is a little more bearish than uh, than what we have in the uh, in the bonds themselves. If you'll bear with me here, one second, I have to uh, move this chart so that I can get it on to the screen for TFD, and it will take a look at it here. Um, and just give me one second. There we go. We're almost ready. Anyway, you'll notice here when you take a look at the Treasury notes uh, going back to 2012, uh, yesterday's high was a perfect 61% retracement to the exact tick. I mean, the bonds made a 786 to the exact tick, and the notes made a uh, exact 618 to the exact tick. I think someone's trying to tell us something. This is my guess. So we're going to find out very, very soon whether these are going to be uh, the thing to uh, hold our uh, feet to the fire on or not. But it certainly looks like we are getting ready to have a uh, you know really big uh, correction here uh, in something. Now what I'm going to do here is I want to show you the uh, the same pattern. I'm going to put the Gartley pattern in here on the notes because it happened uh, last night around uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, um, Tucson time. Uh, my alert happened to go off, but uh, if you'll notice here, the same thing happened in notes. Uh, notes, of course, they have a lot less volatility than the bonds because of the way they're structured. And uh, you can see, though, we had the big run-up uh, yesterday where they went up and made the 61% retracement. Then they backed off a little over uh, almost $3,000, whereas the bonds backed off $9,000. And then today they went up and hit a perfect 61% retracement up there at the uh, 129.18 uh, level, hitting it the exact tick. And, uh, and since that time, we've gone down and we've taken out the mid-afternoon low of yesterday. So this also having these real wild swings. What this means to me, looking at it from a uh, trading uh, premise, is that as long as these bonds uh, you know, don't run away to the upside, the fear factor is not going to be nearly as bad as people are thinking it's going to be. Because when those bonds and notes took off yesterday, you know, it literally was scared everybody. And, uh, you know, we've been thinking we're going to see more of this, and we are. This is just the beginning of this, my friends. I really believe this. I mean, we've got the Bradley model date coming in here yesterday or today, and then we should have a rally into early next week. That would be the ideal a scenario if you want to trade from the short side because what would happen is you would be coming up into a little three to five day rally starting uh, yesterday if that's the bottom and that would take us into Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on the 25th uh, which is a Saturday is uh, you know when we have that Venus opposition Uranus that is uh, so very very big and then we are looking at the um, spot where uh, Shane Smolian we talked about yesterday uh, about that November 13th date. And I appreciate all the folks that contacted him. He, he enjoyed it very much. He, he liked being on the show. And I'm certainly going to have him on uh, very often because uh, he's very busy. And, uh, but he does give us, we only need about 15 or 20 minutes of his time. But I hope to have him on. Uh, at least every couple weeks, if not sooner. He's a really bright young fellow that knows computers. He certainly understands the astro harmonics of these markets, and he can give us a lot of information. And some of his uh, his calls have been just absolutely uh, outstanding. And you know that's what we're all looking for is to find a place where we can get in without risking uh, very much at all. So we'll uh, we'll have him on later. I'm also trying to get Arch Crawford on the first of the week. He's been traveling. And I believe he gets back this weekend, and I'll try to have Arch on next week, uh, hopefully on Monday or Wednesday, to see if we can, uh, you know, get him uh, on the show. So keep an eye on these Treasury bonds and Treasury notes. This is where the real money is. This is what's happening, you know, to uh, what's going on with the, the real cash in the markets and stuff like that. So um, that's where the real um, real money is. And if as long as this thing starts to back off, I think stocks could bottom here for a little bit, and we get a little rally here because we're extremely oversold, and we came very, very close to the 61% retracement in the Dow going back to um, last year, uh, last February. That that came in at the uh, level of, I believe, uh, 15,600. We got uh, within about 100 pips of that, 100 points of that today. So that's still, uh, you know, a possi possibility of, uh, you know, what we're looking at 
uh, at this particular spot. So that's the bottom line with the bond market. I really think that we've something really significant has happened here uh, with those two numbers being hit. It's just a huge market, and when they hit them spot on like that, it certainly means a great deal. I know this is the commodity show, but just about all the emails that I got about the show today were the uh, were about the stock market, of course. Uh, unfortunately, I guess uh, Basil was uh, out of town, and so we haven't been able to uh, get his uh, thing on the. Oh, the excuse me, the, his uh, take on the. Uh, VIX index, but uh, uh, this is something that we've been looking at for quite some time here. If you'll give me one second here, I've got to sh uh, shrink this uh, chart down. But uh, our objective, our first objective in the VIX is at 40, and we're only at uh, 26 right now. Uh, we hit uh, yesterday, we got all the way up to 31, and then we backed off. That's another reason to think that we are very, very close to a uh, you know some type of a market uh, uh, rally here because the VIX index has come off uh, you know well over 20% uh, in just a real short period of time. We went a little above the 50% retracement of the high from 2011, but uh, I believe this is just starting, folks. Uh, I really believe that you're, you're starting to see uh, a little glimpse of what the volatility is going to be like, in fact, what it used to be like. I mean, we used to get 20, 30-point swings in the uh, S&P all the time, but, you know, we literally don't get that anymore. So uh, we are going to, well, we're getting it now, that's for sure. It goes up 50 and down 50, you know, just like, uh, just like magic. So that's the, the bottom line uh, with the VIX index. I think we've got a chance, you know, to see something, you know, pretty dramatic happening here. Uh, the next one that I wanted to talk about, because we've had so many people, uh, well, the one person that called in. <laughs> Hold on one second, uh, and that is the uh, Bradley model here, and the uh, and the the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. As you can see here, uh, you'll you'll be able to see the uh, number here on the seven eight six for the Dow. Oh dear! Hold on a second here. Yeah, there we go. Let me spread this out a little bit, and you'll see that we almost made the uh, seven eight six retracement here uh, in the Dow, going back to. Uh, the February low, and so what we're looking at now is uh, what what happens here these next four or five days. Because if we get this rally in the Bradley model coming into uh, uh, the end of next week, like on the the Friday the 24th, and frankly, folks, if the market is open on Friday the 24th, which I'm sure that it will be, uh, we certainly want to be short into this next that weekend of the 25th, 26th. We have the solar eclipse coming in on the 23rd. We've got a little break here. The Dow's uh, coming back a little bit. It's only down 56, 46 after being down 180. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary for Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, Fortune is smiling on us. I was getting ready to talk about gold, and we have a caller from California. Brent, are you there? I am, Larry. How are you today? I am good, my friend. You ask a question about or have a question about gold? Yeah, I see some positives. We've done that third uh, test of the 1180 range. Uh, we've obviously made uh, a little bit of a move up here. We had a very small retracement off of that $50 move, I guess, up from 1183 up to 1238. It was less than a 382, and I just wanted to get your opinion what you thought of it. Well, we're sitting right at the 382 of the last high that we made back in July, but we've made it so quickly that uh, my assumption is that, you know, this is the start of a larger move, at least equal to what we had during June and July. June and July, we had a $120 move. And so if we take a $120 move uh, off of the bottom, that's going to take us up to near 1300 which will be the 61% uh, retracement of the high that we made back in July. So that's what I'd be looking at. My objective in gold during this run here off this triple bottom is at least uh, the 1290 to 1300. However, if we should get above the 1320 level, uh, we could be looking at a really big run in gold because of the fact that we hit those three bottoms. Uh, I mean, there's got to be a lot of support in gold at the 1180 level because we've hit it three times over the last several years, and that tells us that there's somebody sitting there with a big wallet. 
uh, when gold gets down to that level. You know, it hit. You know, those are three bottoms that we were looking for, especially the last bottom. And you even mentioned this the last time you called is that we made this big A B C D uh, from the March uh, of earlier this year. You know, down into May, then up into July. That was a perfect A B C D pattern coming in there at that 1185 level, also. No, it looks good to me. So it's like we're on the same page. Um, those were kind of the targets I had as well. So, um, well, we'll we'll see how it, we'll see how it holds up. But as long as we stay uh, above the 1200 level, we could easily get a you know a sell off here uh, because the markets all the markets are very volatile. But as long as it doesn't pull back more than 78 percent of this last run that we had, which has been um, 70 dollars, we should be okay. And so do you generally just kind of watch these different retracement levels and how it reacts as it gets to those? Or that, you, that's, all, you... that's all I can do because I'm like everybody else. I don't know what's going to happen next, and I'm not, you know, I don't know when the next trade is going to happen. All, all I can do is, you know, try to quantify the risk of the things that I'm looking at. So I look at the retracements of 61% retracement and 786 retracement as a guideline. Now, Fortune can sometimes put a nice pattern in there, you know, on the hourly chart or even the daily chart, you know, to get an ABCD pattern, which also gives you some more information. But when the market's straight up like this uh, since October the 6th, you know, you, there's really, there, we've only had one tiny little pullback uh, yesterday that was intraday that didn't even make a 382 retracement. So that's not even a retracement. It's just been straight oh, exactly. up for 10 days. Yep. No, no, it did like a, it was about a point two eight retracement or something. So yeah, it was very quick. Um, I guess that's it. I just I appreciate you taking my call, and and I just hope you have a good day, and and I'll plan on talking to you soon. Hey, we love talking to you. So call in any time, my friend. All right. Take care, Larry. You bet. Okay, now if we take we've uh, when we're taking a look at gold here, that's had a pretty good move. However, if we take a look at silver, silver on the other hand, has had a beautiful retracement here at the Gartley uh, level that we talked about on the show uh, yesterday. It made a perfect 61% uh, retracement. I'm going to uh, show the hourly chart here because uh, it really gives a really good idea of what happened with the uh, with the silver. However. As, as opposed to gold, silver has come down to a 786 retracement of the of the low that we made on the 16th, on the 15th. In other words, uh, silver went from 1705 uh, all the way up to uh, 1885, and then today's low was a perfect 786 retracement, right to the penny at uh, 17 dollars and 21 cents. And uh, it's rallied about uh, 30 cents, for, or 20, yeah, about 25 cents from that level. So that tells us that that level is very strong uh, in the silver market. Now, as you can see from this chart, when you're looking at the two uh, precious metals together, the candlestick chart, of course, is the 60-minute silver chart. And then the blue chart, which is the line chart, is the gold. And you can see gold is extremely more bullish than the silver. There, there's been very few corrections, and uh, the, it's made higher highs all along the way. And silver was not able to make a higher high until yesterday. But it is still holding up, and that's the key. As long as it stays above 17, we've got a chance for higher prices. We've got the Dow still down about 40, but the market's trying to come back. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach out levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, folks, uh, I'm um, going to be talking about uh, the euro because that's 53% uh, of the U.S. dollar index. Uh, we've had great volatility here. Uh, what I'm uh, posting into Tiger TV uh, is the 60-minute euro chart going back over the last uh, month. Uh, and as you can see, we made that uh, three drive to a bottom pattern down there at the 125 level. Uh, which was a perfect 786 retracement on the um, long-term weekly charts. I'll show that in just a second. But during the, the, the big brouhaha yesterday when everything was going crazy, uh, the euro went all the way up to the uh, 786 retracement of the high we made uh, in the middle of September up around the 130 level. We went to 129, and then we backed off uh, very, very quickly to the 61% retracement, and now we're backing and filling uh, on this. So it's very important where we are. The, the euro was extremely oversold, as we mentioned many times. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, if we take a look at this weekly chart, nothing's really changed. You know, we hit the exact 786 down there at 125, and now we've had a 400 pip rally. Folks, I don't think this thing is going to rally very much. It might rally for two or three more weeks. It might rally for two or three more minutes or two or three more hours. But I believe that we are going down to at least one, 108 and probably uh, even par or lower 
uh, in the euro. This got a, if this is it got this weekly chart is incredibly bearish, uh, and uh, all we did was stop spot on at the 786 in a very oversold market that had been down uh, three months without a uh, without a, even a, a a slight hint a hint of a rally, and so this is what we're getting now is uh, we're we're correcting that that grossly oversold condition. The question is how far it's going to go uh, to the upside. If we get above 129, uh, we most probably will get somewhere up around the 131, 132 level, which will be near the 382 and 50% retracements uh, of the last move. So that's what we're following here. But the good part about the euro, folks, is if you want to uh, if you want to see the swings in the Fibonacci uh, sequence and you want to see the patterns, uh, you know, the ABCDs and the Gartleys and the butterflies, uh, the euro has it. It's like a, uh, it's like a, it's like a, Christmas, uh, a Christmas tree decoration for Fibonacci when you're looking at the euro because the ratios and the patterns are all over the place no matter what time frame you pick. They're just, it's just a great... Uh, trading vehicle and the fact that it's the best trading vehicle that there is is also you know a very important uh, you know to keep in mind now I did have a question uh, about something that I think is extremely important we mentioned it on yesterday's show and that is that the small cap index the IWM has held the 786 retracement and actually has been up two days. It was up yesterday with the market down sharply. And today with the market down sharply, the IWM could barely get down on the day and has been up almost all day today. Uh, it's actually... Uh, you know, still up on the day right now, so it's it's looking very very positive. And this is this is what happened to us several times before. I can remember uh, back in uh, I've mentioned this before, but on August the fifteenth of nineteen <laughs> of two thousand and seven, we had the same type of uh, same type of a move where we had a uh, the the IWM really held the market up for a while, and then it started to move. Uh, as long as the bonds don't go crazy. Uh, I really think that this market has a chance to rally. It's very oversold. We're finishing up the last of the real negative stuff for the next few days before the next batch of ne negative things come in at the end of next week. So we might get a rally here. That doesn't mean we're going to get one. It just means we might get one. So that's the bottom line of uh, looking at this. But the IWM has held up really well so far. That's a very important thing. The other thing is the uh, if we remember the pattern that we talked about uh, last Monday, and if I can uh, if I can just get this uh, oh boy hold on a second, I have to pull it up here, and I know I've got it. It's just a question of how do I get it, and it's this is the bad part of being an Italian. You have to walk and chew gum with the Oh, dear, and I don't have it. So I'm in big trouble on this one. We'll just try to find it if I can, and then we will go from here. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, I've got it. Just a second here. We'll take a look at it. We'll be okay. There it is. This is the, uh, the Jaws of Death pattern that uh, we talked about uh, last week. Uh, we have gone down, and we made the uh, bottom end of that objective, when the uh, we hit 7,800 in the Dow Jones transportations, so uh, that has completed that particular uh, objective of that jaws of uh, li jaws of death pattern, also known as the reverse point wave. So that's something else that's telling us that we could be looking at a, a move uh, going down. After we have a little bit of a rally, we'll go a little bit lower than that. But that's pretty much what we're what we're looking at right now but that's uh, that's the bottom line we've hit some pretty good spots on uh, these things the New York Stock Exchange Index uh, went right down to the 786 is held not by much it's hanging on by its uh, by the threads but it's still got a chance you know to hold together here and uh, you know look like it has a semblance of a chance for a rally and I believe the rally that we get is going to be very short it might be very violent I'm not, you know, 100% sure of that, but I'm never 100% sure of anything. So uh, I would watch that very, very closely, uh, this rally that we get, if, in fact, we do get it. Uh, but my overall uh, price objective of this swing down, and I don't think that will finish until November the 13th, is somewhere around 14,000 in the Dow. That's 2,000 points uh, from where we are uh, right now. We've come down 600 from the... Uh, 
actually 700, yeah, 600 points from the high. So I believe we've got, we're about a third of the way down, if that's going to be the case. And we'll, we'll see if, in fact, this is going to be, uh, you know, what's, what's going to happen. Keep an eye on the Treasury bonds, folks, and the Treasury notes, because therein lies the key. That's the real money. Going back to the old Watergate saying, follow the money. That's what you want to be watching, because if we run into a really bad uh, flight to quality uh, like we did yesterday, uh, you know, you're going to see some really wild stuff uh, happen, maybe even more wild than we've already seen. Stop and think of this, folks. You've got an organization called the Federal Reserve Board, and they have been buying bonds for well over three years now and also have been buying uh, debt paper for uh, mortgage, mortgage, mortgage-backed securities. What better way to get rid of all that stuff than have a stock market go down with a flight to quality so they can give the pack, you know, give people the, the, uh, the ability to buy that stuff at a much higher price. Unfortunately, we don't get to see what they're doing because it's a private bank. It's not a, even though it says Federal Reserve, it's a private bank. We don't know what they're doing. But I'm saying that if I were running the Fed, that's what I would do. I would orchestrate some type of, well, I wouldn't orchestrate it, but that, that makes good sense to me. I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not, but uh, that might be something. That might even do a movie script for that one. Hmm, that might be a good one. I'll have to call uh, Steven Spielberg and see if he's busy today. We might have lunch. Okay, uh, someone asked a question about uh, Tesla. You know, we had a uh, you know big move in Tesla. It's down a little again today. Uh, it's a great company. It's just in the middle of a sell-off, just like everything else. So it's no big deal, just like, you know, look at Alibaba. It's only down, uh, you know, $12 from its, from its original high. You know, it's only about 8%. That's not much. You know, so this has been a very orderly correction. The problem is, is that we've had such good volatility where we hadn't had any for, for 13 or 14 months. Those of you that remember going back a couple of years ago during 2011 and 12 and part of 13, you know, the markets used to go up and down all the time. But during 2014, since February, they just went up. We had a couple of small corrections, but nothing. Now the market's in there ringing the bell, telling them that's, uh, you know, what we're looking at. And so you've got to pay attention to that, in my opinion. So whether that's right or not, I don't know. But, you know, this volatility that we're having, the, the VIX index is certainly telling us that, you know, we're looking at something volatile. It's tripled in price in four weeks. That ought to mean something. That's the fastest we've come out of here in a long time, and this is uh, this is going to be big. You know, we've looked at these some of these cycles, and boy, they're they're just starting out. That's the that's the key to to what I'm uh, to what I'm watching here. So I hope that's uh, I hope that's helpful. But keep an eye on that IWM, the small caps, because they did lead us out of the doldrums several times. And it was very oversold. You know, it was down on the year uh, as of Thursday. It's actually come back to be up slightly on the year. But most of those things have, uh, you know, frankly gone a, uh, you know, gone by the wayside as far as, uh, you know, being in uptrends. There's no question in that. There's, uh, there's nothing else. I want to get back to commodities now because we've got one that has really, uh, really been cascading down here. And we've got a long way to go. And this one, in my opinion, this, this is crude oil. Uh, we take a look at it on a daily basis. We're down near the lows we made in 2012, down around $77 a barrel. Uh, as you've probably heard on TF or on um, C CNBC and also Bloomberg, if you watch any of those, uh, this is causing a great deal of concern in Russia because the break-even price uh, for oil in Russia is around $90 uh, a barrel. Uh, oil, excuse me, gasoline here in Tucson, folks is uh, $2.86 a gallon. I mean, I don't remember it being that low. Uh, I know it was during, uh, you know, 99, I'm sure of that, because we were trading at about a buck and a half. But over the past seven or eight years, we've never been that low uh, in gasoline. So it's, uh, it's very, very interesting. Now, if we take a look, and I'm trying to look at something on a longer-term basis here, and you'll, you'll see the, the importance of this when you look at this long-term chart here, uh, in crude oil, uh, this shows the uh, when we broke the 61% retracement at $91 a barrel, you know, we basically dropped $10 a barrel very, very fast. It only took three weeks to do that. That was just done, you know, in the middle of September when we broke. And uh, now we have, uh, we're challenging the 2012 low 
and that means that we're heading down, you know, far, far lower. My price objective on low on this move in oil is between 60 and 65 dollars a barrel. That's uh, you know what I'm you know really looking at. So we'll see if uh, we'll see what uh, see what's going to happen with this. But you can see it broke the uh, the pennant uh, on the downside at ninety dollars a barrel, and uh, you know since that time you know it's been just cascading to the downside. Heating oil uh, looks even worse. Uh, if you take a picture of heating oil, and, and we should be in the middle of uh, uh, the strongest part of the heating oil uh, year because of the seasonality, uh, better than 75% chance that heating oil goes up during the uh, months of uh, October and November and December. And I'll put the uh, heating oil chart in, and you'll see that it's done anything except go up. It's been straight down uh, over the past month. And here, just like crude oil has been uh, just heading to the downside, you know, one after, you know, one after another. Okay, now um, we'll get on to the grains here for just a second. We're going to have to come to a break here pretty soon. But uh, the, uh, uh, the Dow is uh, holding up okay. We're still struggling at that fifth, down 50 in the Dow. Uh, if we can get it unchanged, this has got a chance to, uh, you know, maybe have a little bit of a rally today. But even then, it'll be probably short-lived uh, just from the standpoint of looking where we are. Now, I'm going to start out with the, uh, with the corn because that's the biggest of, the, uh, of our crops here in the United States. And if you just give me a second, I will get that up here. And you'll see here that we had, uh, oh, dear, just one second again. The old punch and click didn't work the way I wanted it that to at that time. So, uh, boy, what's exciting about this, folks, is when you get up in the morning, you never know what to expect because of the fact that we've had so much uh, uh, volatility overnight in some of these things. When you go to bed, the Dow is up, uh, you know, 80 points, and you wake up, and it is... Uh, you know, it is down 150. So uh, this is this is stuff that uh, pattern recognition people dream about. Okay, going over the last two months in uh, the uh, corn, we finally had a, a, a bottom that formed around three 319 a bushel. We've now rallied up to the 61% retracement at the. Uh, 357 yes, uh, yesterday, we hit the exact 61% retracement. We've since sold off about uh, 12 cents at that level, but uh, it did make the 61% retracement from that move, so it's telling us that the technical part of corn is still moving in the right direction. Now, we realize that, you know, we got a massive corn crop coming in here, folks. It's going to be start harvested here uh, towards the end of the month. And uh, they're not going to be able to put all this corn anywhere, so they're going to have to have a giant clearance sale somewhere. Or uh, there might be uh, maybe Chinese buying, or they might do a deal with corn with Russia. Who knows what could happen. But uh, corn's going to have some pretty tough resistance at the $3.60 per bushel level that Rich Anderson told us about last week. They just don't have any place to store all this corn, you know, that is coming, you know, down the pike. We had the same thing happen in the soybean market. We had a very good rally in beans. Uh, and we'll be back right after this break. we still got the Dow down uh, about 40-some uh, points, trying to hold its own here. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. 
And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Emma Bank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin here on TFNN. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, folks, we're back, and we are going to finish up the show here with two things. One is we uh, I wanted to show the big ABCD pattern that we've had over the last several weeks. Uh, in the uh, trish, in the excuse me in soybeans, uh, we've gone from uh, 905 a bushel all the way up to uh, 980 a bushel, which was a perfect ABCD right at the 786 uh, in the uh, market for uh, the soybeans. And here again, we have a huge crop coming in, which is going to be difficult to uh, move at these prices, is my guess. But we'll have to wait and see. We also have a question from one of our listeners. Is there a possibility that we are looking at a major low in the crude oil market and the heating oil market and also the uh, gasoline market? And my answer to that is I don't think so, but I leave all options open. I don't see any number here at $80 uh, per barrel. It's not a 786. It's not uh, any number that I can find in the Fibonacci summation sequence. So, you know, the fact that we've rallied, uh, well, we've rallied almost $3 a barrel today, 
is not a big deal because if you remember, you know, on Wednesday we were down almost, well, we were down four and a half dollars a barrel. So that's just increased volatility like what we're having in stocks. I mean, just look the other day, you know, the, the S&P was down, uh, it was down 70 points from the previous day and it rallied 60 points and then went back and made new lows. So this is just increased volatility as near as I can tell. It's going to take a lot of, uh, a lot of technical uh, information other than what we have in crude oil to say that there's a possibility, you know, of a bottom in here. And, and it could be. There might be some type of a deal being made with Putin, you know, to, to prop up oil prices and he moves out of uh, Russia or wherever he has to go. And believe me, those things happen all the time. I watch enough TV shows that I see that occurs. You know, all you have to do is watch Law and & Order and Legends and a few of these other shows, and you'll see that uh, these people sometimes don't tell you what they're doing. That's why I quit my job at the CIA and became a traitor. So who knows? I have a funny story. I think I have time to tell this story. One of my very best friends uh, died back in 96, uh, 97, uh, the same weekend that O.J. Uh, was incarcerated. And uh, Jay owned a big ranch up in um, uh, Tonopah, Nevada. And uh, it was a ranch owned by Jimmy Stewart, and he used to bring in people from all over the world, and he brought in some cocoa producers from um, uh, Africa, and uh, they were uh, vacationing and stuff, and with them was a CIA contingency. And one night, one of those boys got a little soused, a little under the weather, and uh, Jay asked him if he ever uh, used the CIA to, uh, you know, to, to look at what crops were doing. And he laughed and he said, look, he said, we can read a warning label on a cigarette pack from five miles up in the sky. We can certainly see what a cocoa plant or a coffee tree is doing or a soybean plant is doing. And uh, he went on to, you know, rattle off and off. And he said, how do you think we fund all these cl clandestine you know, uh, deals. And he said it's because we trade in the commodity markets and stock markets, you know, to get the money so we don't have to run it through Congress. I don't know if any of that is true, but that's what I was told. So that is rumor. It's not fact. But I thought it would bring a little levity into the show tonight, given the fact that we've had all this uh, volatility over the past uh, 24 to 36 hours. It's just getting started, folks. We are uh, we are on the precipice of record-making uh, maybe it'll be record making that will surprise me, which it always does. So we'll see. But anyway, these are things that uh, we got to remember that uh, when you're using a three point stop in the S and P, that doesn't work anymore. You know, because it's jumping 15 and 20 points at a time. So you've got to change it a little bit. You know, so who knows? That's uh, that's pretty much what we're looking at. So that's it, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless and do something nice for someone who has a lot less than you today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.